No, John Stamos. Oh. Whoa. What happened? Oh, last thing I remember, I was watching just... Just an ungodly amount of Full House, and then... I must have blacked out. Oh, good. You're back. So, if I remember correctly, last time we were talking about licensed video games, and ones that I felt maybe shouldn't exist. Not that they're bad, they just don't make sense. Well, luckily for us, the game that we're going to talk about today, the one that I mentioned that I wanted to tell you about later, that game technically doesn't exist. What game is it? Well, you probably already know if you clicked on the video, but just in case, I'll remind you. It is called Steven Seagal is the final option. Developed by Tech Magic, the game was intended to release for the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis in 1994 and would have starred the big man himself, Steven Seagal. An action star so big, the Expendables couldn't get him. The game was continuously delayed, and even underwent a name change to Deadly Honor, which would have released instead on the PlayStation and the N64, but it was ultimately cancelled for reasons I can't seem to confirm. I guess you could say that Tech Magic's greatest trick is making this game disappear. That is until the days of the internet, when a playable beta was unofficially released. The game loads to a title screen and, well, there he is. That is Steven Seagal. This is... this is really happening. The funny thing is, this isn't even based on any of his movies. This is just based on him. Also, referring to him as the final option doesn't really sound as intimidating as they meant it to. It just sounds like he's the last person you'd choose if you had to choose anyone for anything. For people who hate how modern games can sometimes take so long just to get into the action, this might just be the game for you because the first enemy is just... there. Right when the level starts, he's just like, BAM! Right there. And look at that walk cycle! Excuse me, I'll just be off to the kitchen. Not only does walking look funny, it feels really weird and slow too. But I guess it's better than watching him run. After beating the first dude, I decided to check out a nearby terminal. And right away, you can see evidence that this game is clearly unfinished. Each terminal I came across when I played this had the same placeholder text. Terminal screen gives context sensitive help. There's a lot in this beta that proves very much that the game was not finished. It's actually pretty fascinating. It's almost like a behind the scenes look into game development. The first level starts and you're already missing health. But even with health pickups, the health bar never fills up past this. You can even walk through some crates and over some electrified doorways. Or kind of... It's like through them, but on top I mean, I can't even put that into words. It looks like something that would make MC Escher scratch his head. Steven Seagal doesn't need to obey the laws of physics. He's Steven Seagal. Also, what the heck kind of jump is this? I can jump better than that. Me. With a jump like that, there's no way I'm going to be able to make it over this gap. Or so you'd think. Just like magic, this somehow turns into this. I didn't realize Steven Seagal was so good at defying physics. Why make him the final option? With moves like those? Like that? First option. Every time. Nazis will never see it coming. Especially against such unthreatening enemies like this. How much of a threat do these guys look like to you, especially when they sometimes just stand there and don't even fight until you attack them? The guards in this game are one thing, but I just feel bad for the scientists. Look at this guy. He's just walking along, minding his business, doopy doopy doo. And I had to go all Steven Seagal on him. I have a PhD! What other means of assault does this game offer? So that's the throwing knife. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, the combat is not as fun as it looks. You sometimes get into these weird spots where you're either not lined up right with the enemy or they're too close to you and you end up missing your attacks. Because that makes a ton of sense. When you die in the game, you can actually target where you want Steven to respawn. It took me a couple tries to grasp this concept. It actually kind of makes the platforming in this game seem almost pointless. You just teleport right back in there like the Green Ranger. This is supposed to be a laboratory. Why are there so many gaps that have to be jumped across? And why is everything on a bunch of high ledges with no guardrails to speak of? I know this game is from a different time before safety codes were what they are today, but common sense is common sense. Oh good! A waterfall! No science lab is complete without a natural waterfall, including rocks sitting in the water. Who designed these levels? Throughout the second level, there are these weird pickups, but you have no idea what they do at first. 
I'm pretty sure the nearby terminals are supposed to explain, but as I mentioned, none of them actually say anything other than the same meaningless placeholder text. Oh look! A new type of enemy! Oh, this guy's got a gun! Clearly much more of a threat than the others, right? No! If these guys were supposed to use their guns, they must not have been programmed to yet because they never did. As it turns out, those unexplained pickups I mentioned turned out to be parts of a bomb. A bomb that you place next to some crates, giving you a 99 second time limit. Only it's more like, I don't know, 99 super seconds or something? Each of these seconds actually felt more like a few real seconds. As if that wasn't bad enough, you wouldn't even need 99 regular seconds. You literally plant the bomb, walk out the door, turn the corner, and the exit is right there. In the next level, Steven Seagal flies off to Mustafar where he must face his wayward Padawan Anakin Skywalker, but not before fighting off more evil henchmen and walking over the lava in the foreground. I got to this moving platform, which must be Steven's only weakness because even his magic magnet jump couldn't save him here. I even tried to respawn on the other side of the gap, but the game just wasn't going to give it to me. I tried over and over again to make this jump before suddenly realizing that there's more to this life and I probably had enough footage to make a video. So there we have Steven Seagal is the final option. While it's understandably unfinished, even the parts that work are pretty rough. It's kind of easy to see why this game was canned. But there is one question that remains. Why does Steven Seagal hold his guitar like this? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, feel free to check out one of these other videos you see here on the screen. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me by looking up The Portly Gamer on the social networks below.